YouTube. In today's video, we're gonna be discussing the brand new S24 Ultra versus the S23 Ultra. What actually changed and should you upgrade? Now this is part one. Part two will come a little bit later when we get really in depth after using both devices for some time. But you know, with this announcement and from a visual perspective, Honestly, not much has changed because this is more of a refining year, another refining year with some changes. So let's talk about what actually is different and are these changes worth an upgrade, whether you're coming from the S23 Ultra, S22 Ultra, or the beautiful S21 Ultra. Let's talk about it. Oh, and before I continue, uh, my last video, I, I spoke about a rumor or elephant in the room about, you know, Samsung only giving AI features free until the end of 2025. Well, that's been confirmed by the small print, the fine print on the website, on Samsung's website. So that actually is true. I just wanted to clarify that. You know, I made sure I put a disclaimer the last time because I wasn't sure. Some people were like, ah, you just making a video about a rumor. It's not a rumor, it's confirmed. Okay, design and appearance. Literally the S23 Ultra and S24 Ultra design from a sizing perspective and weight is literally the same. Like it's small fraction of difference, but at the end of the day, it's the same design. The biggest difference comes in the display now being a fully flat panel. And I'm happy for that. Some people aren't, but I just think flat panels make more sense. The curved edge, it was cool for a while, but ultimately every other device that has a flat panel is even more pleasing to use and just interact with. Luckily, Samsung has went back to that and I'm looking forward to that. Now, not only did the panel get flatter, but the big change is in the nits. Going from 1750 to 2600 is gonna be a change that's gonna benefit us indoors and especially outdoors as well. You guys know I always do my outdoor indirect light you know, showcase, I will be doing that for you guys. It's coming up in part two. This is part one, subscribe for part two. Now, from a platform perspective, they're both gonna be running Android 14 and One UI 6.1 is coming along with the 24 Ultra and I'm pretty sure it's gonna follow uh, in the upgrades with the S23 Ultra. So I wouldn't really look at that as being much of a separating factor, but the platform is generally the same except for the fact that we got Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 versus the 8 Gen 2. But the 8 Gen 2 on the S23 Ultra is more than worth it right now. So if you're on an older device and the S23 Ultra took a price cut and you out there getting a discount on it, this is still a solid buy versus the S24 Ultra by far as far as what it offers with the 8 Dragon you know, Gen 2 versus the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, which still has to go through, you know, some paces now from a performance uh, you know, perspective from Geekbench or whatever, you can see the numbers, they're uh, close, but at the end of the day, the newer chip is obviously gonna be a bit more optimized. And the main thing to check, or to be checked, is the overall efficiency with that new OLED panel having 2600 uh, nit peak brightness and seeing how that affects the battery, as well as some of the other features with the AI and things like that. We gotta see what the power draw is gonna be like after using S24 Ultra for a while. So. That will be in part two. But continuing on, even on the platform around the storage, the storage is the exact same hardware. A lot of the hardware is recycled. So that's just something to keep in mind. That's the beauty of when you do refinements, you get to continue the same hardware, which has been the playbook and you know, Apple's get down. Obviously they're changing the chip and they're gonna change a few things to give an improvement and optimize for a better and more efficient experience. But essentially you get to use a lot of the same hardware. Now, some of the hardware that is different is now we're gonna be having that titanium bill, which I'm looking forward to. I did get the uh, S24 Ultra in the normal natural titanium so that I can compare it to the iPhone 15 Pro Max in its normal natural titanium. We'll see who has the better titanium look. But from what I've seen and what I'm you know, looking at, I'm not gonna lie, the S24 Ultra looks good in its natural titanium form. And hey, it is what it is. You know, there's the back and forth, you know, Apple people were like, hey, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, the S24 and S24 Plus, they look, right on dead on with iPhones. Let's just keep it a buck. Same round design, flat edge, and so forth. Now, luckily, the S23 Ultra, S24 Ultra, they're keeping their identity with this rectangular design, but outside of that, you know, the titanium sides and the back end, very similar to what iPhone did 
and so forth. And there's a couple other things, even with the lock screen and so forth. But it doesn't matter. It's tip for tat. This is competitive. This is what it happens in this industry. It's not that big of a deal. The only reason I poke fun <laughs> at the Samsung Nikes Put Your Swords Away is because they had a lot to say when it was on the other side. You know what I mean? But now that it's flipped, I'm seeing a lot of, you know... <laughs> Hey, you know, refinements are good now. Right, I see that. Hey, yo, even my bro, that, yo, shout out to Floss. Major respect. I love Floss, but I saw my guy. I get it. He's Samsung gang. I respect it. Samsung nice. I respect all of y'all, and I respect y'all opinions. But it's cool to see you guys accepting the refinement life because refinements are fine. They, they've been on iPhones for a while, and now you guys are starting to understand why refinements help and work for the consumers and why people would even buy refinements. So, welcome to the refinement life. <laughs> Let's carry on real quick. And in those very refinements, there won't be a ton of changes. You guys can see, literally with the S24 Ultra, it's just a tad bit faster, a tad bit snappier than the S23 Ultra with, you know, a slightly improved camera, only one of them. All of the other camera ha hardware is the same. They're recycling the same camera hardware, and from the results, even what was shown on the keynote, I'm not seeing that big of a difference, except for in the new 5X telephoto because it has 50 megapixels versus the, what what was it, like 10 megapixels before? The low megapixel count of that 10X that everyone thought was better just because it was a 10X versus the 5X that came on the iPhone, which had a higher megapixel count. You understand why Samsung followed suit and grabbed the same 5X, you know, higher megapixel count platform style setup because then you're able to do the cropping into the 10X and still maintain, what is it, like 24 megapixels? So just the math, math's way better in that sense because the 10X zoom was just a, you know, that was just like a, oh, I got the, you know, I got the V8, but you ain't had a Hemi, you ain't had a supercharger, you ain't had a Hellcat. The 5X uh, telephoto was the Hellcat, even though it didn't seem like it because it says 5X. You see, you got to understand what you're really getting. 50 megapixels on the 5X is a W move by Samsung, and I'm glad they did that. Instead of chasing the spec sheet thought glory, they actually went with something that sound and will actually give something to us in the camera department. Now, I love the 5X on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I'm assuming that I shall appreciate, because I've always appreciated the zoom and the periscope lens on the Samsung platform. The only question is, because you guys know I have my gripes with Samsung cameras, and it's mainly in the camera photo app and the decisions that they choose to, they literally raise. I showed you guys that in their raw, you know, photos, they have brightness raised or was it highlights or whatever. They're raising highlights purposely to get that brighter overexposure, whatever. I get it. It's, it, it might be cultural. It might be something that's over there that makes more sense, but it just doesn't translate to everyone. And that's my thing with their cameras. But again, we'll see if the S24 Ultra can change my mind. Again, I always use the pro video mode and pro photo mode, and I get the best results that way. I'm going to teach you guys that with the S24 Ultra, as I've done with the S23 Ultra. You already know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and lock in. I will be giving you guys content that you can actually gain from. Now, let's talk about it. AI, Galaxy AI, that was the biggest focus of the keynote, and that's the biggest separator from the S23 Ultra to the S24 Ultra, is literally Galaxy AI. And they announced that Galaxy AI will be coming. <laughs> it's probably the separation of the 6.1 versus the, you know, One UI 6.0 that all of the older generations are on, but probably will get the upgrade to 6.1 or whatever the next upgrade is. The Galaxy AI is coming to older models. They didn't wanna put it out there in, you know, big, bold, bright letters because that's less of an incentive to upgrade. So Galaxy AI, I got to tip my hat. I liked what I saw. I'm not going to lie. That circle to search with Google. I love that. There's so many times that I'm watching someone's desk set up and so forth, and they may be gatekeeping a certain product. And all I need to do is circle and I can search and figure it out. It's over with. I love that feature. I like the, you know, feature that we've seen with Google where you can move things around and erase and so forth. These are typical AI features. I also like the translation thing. Although I, I don't have a high need or a high probability, at least current, but you never know. Like my goal is to go to some of these expos that are overseas and so forth. And those type of translation tools, which are on the Google platform, let's not sleep now. You know, Google got it. Google came with it first. And again, Samsung is using Google's platform. So it not only makes sense, but Galaxy AI is looking to be dope and fun. But the reality always comes, which is what I always gotta give you guys, how often and 
how much will you actually use these AI features. Now, if you're going to use them a ton and they become a part of like your, you know, every week, every day life or whatever, then, hey, it's an incentive. But outside of that, if we know realistically, they didn't want to say it in bold letters that a said <laughs> S23 Ultra is more than likely going to get these features as well, then what is the incentive to truly upgrade? A flat display, higher nit peak brightness, the 5X with 50 megapixels, I mean, that camera, as someone who likes cameras on smartphones, uh, that's tempting. If you know what I mean, but is it necessary for an upgrade? Not necessarily. That's the thing with refinements. You don't feel as much pressure to go out and spend money to upgrade when you probably shouldn't. And, you know, you can kind of sit tight with your S23 Ultra, even though you're going to be separated. There's no way you're blending in because you don't have titanium. That's the separating factor. There's, people will know who know who are hip. Only people who are hip, they'll be able to tell whether you have you know, the S24 Ultra or the S23 Ultra. You don't feel as left behind or as much pressure to upgrade, but is that a good thing or a bad thing for Samsung? You know what I'm saying? I like the S24 Ultra as it's being presented. I like how solid is lining up to be. You guys can use the opportunity now to comment down below what you guys want me to cover because you guys know how I do. You know what I mean? I get real up in here. I give you the buck. I, I got these joints for the long term. Samsung, yo, you know what I'm saying? Your boy could have been an unpack your boy could have did the coverage as well and all that uh but no love lost i'm still gonna cover samsung devices because i like them i genuinely enjoy the samsung ecosystem and so forth and i'm looking forward to the s24 ultra it's as simple as that so stay tuned for part two hit the subscribe button turn on the bell lock in it's your boy cj this is the tech corner baby let's get Ooh. you technology snobs technology snobs i didn't just about had it with all of y'all listen huh. duck No watch, no diamonds, no watch, good timing, yeah. No watch, no diamonds, no watch, good timing, yeah. Need no middleman, I'm the man of man, send it in. I like what I like, me, I know my rights, it's sipping in. I like having fun, I do what I want, it's what it is. For my son and son, for my daughters, yeah, it's for my twin. I work through the night.